The Federal Reserve is looking to take on the traditional crypto industry with their Fed Now payment service that is designed to maintain uninterrupted payments 24-7. And coincidentally or not so coincidentally, at the same time, they are talking about the possible benefits and cons of a central bank digital currency. Now, this comes at a time when big asset managers, the largest one in the world in the form of BlackRock, is in fact in favor of decentralized cryptocurrency and blockchain such as Bitcoin. And Fidelity has just launched their Bitcoin trading accounts to the public. We are going to break down all of what this means in today's video, as well as why I believe that Quant, our favorite altcoin on the channel, is said to benefit massively from the future centralization of crypto and blockchain technology. What is up, everyone? And welcome back to the Everything Crypto Show, where we keep you up to speed on the most important news moving the crypto markets. Now, make sure to hit that sub, like, and notification bell, and join the Everything Crypto squad. And with that, we're going to hop right in here with the question of the day. So today I want to know if you could only choose to buy Bitcoin or Quant, which one would it be and why? Let me know in the YouTube comments down below. The way I kind of look at this is decentralized versus centralized, and they're pretty much going to be the two main focal points of today's video. So if you had to pick one, let me know which one you were choosing. And with that, we're going to start off with the institutional adoption that is happening by these asset managers. So for starters, BlackRock here, the largest asset manager in the world, has just said in their SEC filing that very interesting developments are happening in Bitcoin and crypto. In emerging markets, it is bringing down costs and advancing financial institution. Now, we also know that last year at some point, BlackRock actually did team up with Coinbase to offer institutional clients access to crypto trading and custody via Coinbase Prime. So BlackRock is definitely very bullish on Bitcoin and the crypto industry as a whole. And at the same time, we actually saw as of March 16th that Fidelity Investments opened up Bitcoin trading to the public. So customers of Fidelity Investments can now buy Bitcoin through Fidelity Digital Assets. Customers are able to buy and sell Bitcoin, although they will not be able to transfer it to a self-custody wallet where the user controls their private keys. So during the launch of the waitlist, there was mention of this ability to come later, but no detail or roadmap has been provided beyond that. And when trading, you are going to be charged a 1% premium, uh, basically for Fidelity middlemaning the purchase. And when compared to what a lot of these decentralized exchanges, even the centralized ones are currently offering 1% is not bad at all. Now it's worth noting that Fidelity has been bullish on crypto for quite a while now. It was actually announced in April of last year that they were to allow Bitcoin investment in retirement plans and this has not been met without criticism from a group of senators actually stating in a letter to the financial firm that Fidelity Investments has opted to expand beyond traditional finance and delve into the highly unstable and increasingly risky digital asset market but this has not not stopped fidelity now obviously i would like to see self-custody and the ability to actually transfer your bitcoin come in the future and i think this is when we will begin to see the real emerge between traditional finance and cryptocurrency and obviously that is something that these senators are terrified of they are terrified of cryptocurrency taking some of the money out of the traditional finance system and moving into this new digital economy but i do think that what asset managers are seeing are seeing here is dollar signs is the ability to capitalize on a new new asset class with very high demand with robust growth and therefore I don't think that BlackRock or Fidelity give a crap what US government and senators are saying and they are really going full blown into crypto so very good to see here from both BlackRock and Fidelity and I mean to put things in a perspective although this is only live for US citizens at the moment it's worth noting that globally Fidelity has 40.9 million individual investors 10.3 trillion in assets under administration and 3.9 trillion in total discretion discretionary assets. So yes, a very, very big asset manager indeed. Very good to see that BlackRock and Fidelity are in fact bullish on crypto. And I do think that we're really going to see massive amounts of money flow into the crypto economy uh, along with this institutional adoption. So while a lot of people are talking about decentralization, I actually think that crypto is going to become more centralized with time. And I am totally okay with that because this means that big capital should be flowing in. And we want to be here before that big money 
while regulatory clarity is still not here yet to benefit from the price appreciation when all this money does finally make its way into crypto now we're gonna hop into sort of like the meat of this video which is the long-awaited fed digital payment system that is now set to launch in july so fed now is the federal reserves digital payment system allowing bill payments money transfers and other consumer activities to move more rapidly and at a lower cost fed now as it as it will be known will create a leading edge payment system that is resilient adaptive and accessible said richmond fed president tom barkin who is the program's executive sponsor and effectively, participants will complete a training and certification process in early April, according to the announcement. With the launch drawing near, we urge financial institutions and their industry partners to move full steam ahead with preparations to join the FedNow service. Institutions that participate in the program will have 7-day, 24-hour access as opposed to a system currently in place that closes on weekends. And if you guys don't believe that the FedNow payment system is launching because the Federal Reserve is threatened by crypto, I mean... I mean, that pretty much is exactly what crypto is 24 7 market service compared to the traditional finance system which has been closed for decades over the weekends and if you if that's not enough proof for you right there it also says here in the last line some fed officials say the program could even supplant the need for a central bank digital currency so this tweet from dylan leclerc pretty much says it perfectly i mean isn't it isn't it a convenient time for some major banking consolidation the banking crisis going on as they are now trying to push a central bank digital currency on retail and presumably this would be a cbdc that was completely issued and that was basically completely owned and issued by the federal reserve themselves now we see here the official post for the fed now service and what's more interesting here is the next page i want to show you guys which is in fact the central bank digital currency page right on the federal reserve.gov website so it says here while the federal reserve has made no decisions on whether to pursue or implement a central bank digital currency or cbdc we have been exploring the potential benefits and risks of cbdc's from a variety of angles including through technological research and experimentation our key focus is on whether and how a cbdc could improve on an already safe and efficient u.s domestic payment system cbdc is generally defined as a digital liability of a central bank that is widely available to the general public today in the united states federal reserve notes i.e physical currency are the only type of central bank money available to the general public. Like existing forms of money, a CBDC would enable the general public to make digital payments. As a liability of the Federal Reserve, however, a CBDC would be the safest digital asset available to the general public with no associated credit or liquidity risk. Kind of like the exact credit and liquidity risk we are seeing right now with these banks in the banking crisis. The Federal Reserve Board has issued a discussion paper that examines the pros and cons of a potential U.S. CBDC. As part of this process, we saw public feedback on a range of topics related to central bank digital currencies. The Federal Reserve is committed to hearing a wide range of voices on these topics. Now, here is a very interesting piece of sort of just a clip of Fed Chairman Jerome Powell speaking, where he talks about what the four things that the Fed is looking for in a CBDC, all of which Quant does appear to be a clear winner of as it does meet these criteria. So I'm going to give you guys a quick listen to this clip and then show you guys some connections between the quant ceo and the federal reserve if we were to pursue a cbdc it would at a minimum have the following four characteristics first is intermediated second is private privacy protected but third is identity verified so it would not be anonymous it would not be an anonymous bearer instrument and fourth is transferable or interoperable so so hmm so we're going to talk about that now and exactly how this does relate to quant. So if we go right over to the quant webpage, we're going to show you right off the bat that if you go to what and then go to, sorry, if you actually go to who and then go to financial institution, we're going to scroll down and show you guys that digital currencies is right here. As it says, central banks across the world are investigating the adoption of digital currencies while commercial banks are issuing their own stable coins often to great acclaim. So here is how quant can actually go ahead and benefit through security 
Ahir compliant digital currencies that operate on scale. And this Ahir well regulated digital currencies, whether at a national or commercial level, can provide significant public benefits by increasing efficiency and reducing costs for both domestic and international payment systems. They can also play a major role in increasing financial inclusion by helping the hundreds of millions of people, especially in developing countries, to connect the financial system. So the challenge is yet without proper regulation, such currencies face serious challenges, particularly in the form of privacy and security, standards compliance, transparency, usability, and performance at scale. Until these challenges are met, digital currencies will pose a threat to national economies. So the solution, Quant enables the simple and flexible implementation of a digital currency, a solution which provides the flexibility to support a wide range of use cases reliably, securely, and at the scale necessary for commercial, national, and international implementation. They say that they facilitate central bank digital currency issuance and transactions, commercial stablecoin issuance and transactions, and tokenized money. And here are the building blocks, the three solutions for digital currencies using their patent pending products. So first is the Quant Overledger, the world's first blockchain agnostic API gateway. Then there is Overledger Integrate, the gateway's core API enabling you to create blockchain applications that run on any chain faster and cheaper. And number three is Overledger Tokenize, the ability to create secure digital tokens without writing a single line of code. Now, we basically, we talked about this quite a bit on the channel, how I do believe that Quant Overledger is set to benefit from the massive centralization of crypto and the upcoming CBDCs, tokenization. We also spoke about BlackRock at the beginning of this video, and we know that BlackRock is also very bullish on tokenization. I think that Quant Overledger does hit a lot of themes that I do believe are going to be very prominent in the next bull run as we do see this institutional and government adoption of crypto and blockchain technology. Additionally, we did in fact see Quant CEO Gilbert Verdian speaking on CNBC, and we actually shared this quote right from the interview. So here is the interview, and it says in the description, uh, on today's show, Quant CEO Gilbert Verdian discusses the closure of Signature and Silvergate and what it means for crypto businesses. And this was the big quote that we did go ahead and share via this tweet, which says, we are seeing a transition to a new form of money, tokenized deposits or liabilities issued by commercial banks that will be followed by CBDCs. So I believe that Gilbert Verdian is also trying to take advantage of this banking crisis and show people that the quant overledger does offer a secure form of money through the central bank digital currencies. And additionally, it's not just these interviews that do lead me to believe that quant has some connections. No, it does run much deeper than that. And we're going to bring you now to his to his LinkedIn to show you guys exactly what I am talking about. So I feel like we visited this LinkedIn quite a bit, but obviously as we are looking at essentially what is a technology company with Quant kind of being the Quant Overledger being the underlying technology and the Quant token being the currency that powers the Overledger, all of the gas fees, licensing fees, not to mention the fact that anybody who uses the Quant Overledger has to actually hold Quant in a contract. And I believe it runs for a year and they then have to choose to either pay more and redeem their license or actually actually give up their quant and not have access to this technology. Now we can see here right on the volunteering experience that Gilbert Verdian did in fact volunteer for the Fed Payments Improvement Committee as well as the Secure Payments Task Force and that is exactly what he is talking about is security. On top of that he is he does sit on the member of board of directors of the Digital Pound Foundation. He worked with the EU Blockchain Observatory and for a member for Blockchain Policy and Framework Conditions Working Group. So very very deep connections with the EU, with the UK, and with the Fed Reserve, who is looking at launching their very own CBDC. Now, how exactly would Quant Overledger power a CBDC? It's broken down in this post on the Quant website, and this is specifically in reference to the Digital Pound Foundation, which Quant is in fact, uh, Gilbert Verdian is one of the board directors of. But this obviously does apply to any CBDC that Quant would be pioneering. So it says here, we are delighted to be supporting the Digital Pound Foundation initiative as a pioneer in distributive ledger technology. Quant's experience of working with banks, intergovernmental organizations, and private industry positions the company perfectly to contribute to the realization of the 
the initiative's vision. In particular, Quant is collaborating with the DPF to deliver interoperability, the ability to interoperate with the existing and emerging global payments infrastructure as well as traditional means of payment including cash and electronic money. Meaning this challenge is key to the success of the UK CBDC or indeed any CBDC. However, a practical way of meeting this challenge has until quite recently evaded the industry. This is where Quant's breakthrough technology is proving critical. The first and only solution to deliver true universal DLT interoperability, Overledger seamlessly interconnects private and public networks, enterprise platforms, and DLTs easily and securely at scale without introducing complexity or additional infrastructure. By deploying Overledger, a CBDC, a CBDC such as the DGBP can interoperate on a number of underlying DLTs and can be used in cross-border applications regardless of the DLT infrastructure. Already used in national and institutional infrastructure, Overledger enables any commercial bank or financial institution to integrate their core banking systems to all new networks of digital assets and CBDCs. So we've already seen that Quant CEO Gilbert Verdian has connections to the US government, the UK government, as well as the EU, all of which who are exploring the potential of a central bank digital currency, something that the Quant Overledger can help all of them with. It's worth noting that Quant's connections do not stop there, as it is also deeply integrated into software stacks of major enterprises across the globe. So here is a look at Quant's four largest public partnerships via Greg Lunt27 on Twitter. Number one here is Oracle. Quant's partnership with Oracle gives 430,000 plus customers plus their clients the ability to easily integrate Quant's interoperability and token management platform. Gilbert Verdian has implied the size of these Oracle clients is quite large, each of which may be spending up to nine figures a year with Oracle. And it says here uh, via Oracle's website, the partnership has resulted in Oracle certifying Overledger for interoperability with the Oracle blockchain platform. For customers looking for production-ready infrastructure to support cross-ledger interoperability between Oracle blockchain platform and other ledger technologies, Quant provides an immediately available solution certified in Oracle cloud infrastructure. Quant is now working in a highly collaborative manner with Oracle to roll out solutions on the Oracle blockchain platform for a variety of sectors. A key sector that they are engaged in is financial services. Two, Quant provides digital asset interoperability rails for LAC chain and LAC networks, a multinational DLN bringing enterprise and public services to 12 plus Latin American countries, including the Latin American dollar. LAC net will onboard tens if not hundreds of millions of users over the next few years onto Overledger as they serve widespread public and private social and economic use cases in the region. Number three, Nexi Group uses Quant to interoperate blockchains and DLTs on their vast payments network, a use case that will continue growing over the next decade. Nexi, which merged with SIA in 2021, is Europe's number one card processor, connecting over 1,000 financial institutions in 25 plus countries and handling 21 billion or over 21 billion transactions per year. And four, Quant provides the foundational technology for UST Global as they offer financial institutions a platform to issue central bank digital currencies, commercial stable coins, and digital securities onto major distributed ledger networks. USD clients include 140 of the top 1,000 companies in the world. So you guys can see here that Quant's connections run deep with the actual connections between Gilbert Verdi and the CEO and his prior volunteering and work experience, as well as the partnerships that Quant does currently have with some of these major companies that are looking to get into blockchain, including mainly central bank digital currencies, any sort of digital currency or token organization, all of which the Quant Overledger is built to handle, while also facilitating the interoperability of these blockchain applications. So without further ado, I hope you guys did enjoy the content in today's video. You know what to do. If you made it all the way to the end, you are an absolute champion. Let me know in the YouTube comments down below and claim that champion status. I hope you are all having an amazing Friday and I hope to catch you in the next one. Peace out for now.